Foot Clan, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, June 1st is approaching. That means the Ultimate Draft Kit is about to launch. That means you have just a few more days to get on the lowest possible pricing. The Ultimate Draft Kit is jam-packed. This is the only tool you need to dominate, to win your fantasy drafts, and it's got something for everybody. Do you, uh, you like videos? you like video profiles? Well, there, there's more than 100 in here. You like blurbs? There's a write-up on every single player that we ranked, our sleepers, our breakouts, our busts, and the best, the best part of this thing, this is a living document. This thing is updated the entire off-season. News breaks, we are in there, imme <laughs> we're in there immediately updating, and you'll see that reflected very, very soon. So check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. Like I said, just a couple days to get the cheapest possible price. Hey, this is head coach Hugh Jackson, the greatest coach of all time. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh my word. No! No! <laughs> wow. Welcome in. Is that real? Oh, that's real, Mike. <laughs> that's 100% our bona fide. You have just cursed this show. Look, the ultimate <laughs> draft kit is about to come out. It's the goat, and then so I had to get the goat head coach. Oh my goodness gracious. To intro the show. Great friend of the show. Thank you, Hugh. Oh, I yeah. uh, I surprised you guys with that one. You yeah. did. <laughs> I was waiting for it. You said you had a surprise for us. I was waiting for your personal Arnold Schwarzenegger imp impersonation, which it, if you're it's not aware, it's, it's, it's indistinguishable from Arnold. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Judge Giamatti didn't even know that intro was coming. Well, now it's, it's out there. That's well, look, what we know. He, he's not wrong. That he's the greatest coach of all time? Not that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome in. Tuesday, May 26th. Shows off to a great start already. Jason Morris here. Mike, the fantasy hitman. I'm Andy Holloway. Mike said it. The UDK comes out next Monday or this upcoming Monday. There are no more Mondays that will take place without the UDK, is what yes, I'm saying. Yes, yes. Mon Mondayless yeah. uh, of UDK. UltimateDraftKit.com, <laughs> lowest possible price. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to have everybody get in there, start digging through the data, all the content. Uh, we've been going at it hard in the paint for mm. the past 20-plus days since the NFL draft ended getting through our player by player team by team statistical projections sleepers breakouts bus values all that stuff very excited you can check us out on youtube youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer subscribe click the bell we're on instagram that's instagram.com slash fantasy footballers the website's the fantasy all right quick question for today's episode which by the way we have a we got some news that we're going to talk about we've got a game we're going to play a little this or that with average draft position, some players going in similar places and who you would take right now. But here's the quick question. Comes in from Instagram. Trent wants to know what team has the best receiving core in the NFL. What's your opinion? Okay, so uh, I know before the show we were talking, what does this mean? Does this Is he wanting to know who has the best group of wide receivers? Or is this what he said, the receiving core? Yeah, no, I think it's fair. It's fair to include both, tight ends and, and wide receivers. And I would say either way, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers apply. I realize that their third wide receiver is, who knows? But uh, when you've got- Scotty got, Miller. Oh, man, there's- It could be Scotty Miller. It there, could are, be, there are like three sets of truthers right now who are going to enter your mentions and <laughs> yes. just burn you to the ground because they're confident it's their guy. Well, look- Are uh, you talking about the Justin- I, the Justin, Justin Watson. Watson truthers won't come after me because they know I am, I am one of them. Superstar, also dynasty championship starting player, Do Justin you and Watson. your fellow truthers all go hang out with like all the, the Aberderis truthers out there? Mm -hmm, Is that mm -hmm. your crowd? The Kristen Michael truthers, <laughs> all those. No, no, no. 
uh, all joking aside, it's, it's Dante it's, Pettis, Truther. It's Godwin and it's Mike Evans, which are great. But now you've you've got OJ Howard. Okay, perennial bust. Also a really good weapon to have on the field, and he might be the second tight end behind he is Gronk, the best. So as a fake core of all time, yes, uh, you know, and and uh, as of right now, Cameron Brate's still there. You've got you know who's the best tight end group in the league. It's it's got to be Tampa Bay, right? Um, with those three uh, tight ends uh, and those two wide receivers, ba- Baltimore's got a better tight end group, but that's all right. Do they? How about no. the Eagles? Yeah, the Eagles. The Eagles. Do too. There you go. Yeah. They're 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 in that mix. But uh, I I would throw the Buccaneers out as the best overall wide receiving core, which is great news for uh, old Brady, the golfer. Oh, that was. Did you see that? I, I saw see some him? things. Yes, you saw him. Uh, I saw his underpants. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah, he split his pants. <laughs> But he uh, stick the shot. Yeah, he, from yeah, the, no, his shot was incredible. The best part was the timing. And then of he it, insulted Charles Barkley of when, when I posted the shot because for our company Slack and our producer Al Borland was just like, man, it, he's he's good at everything. Like this is ridiculous. And then three seconds later is the picture of him picking up his ball with with split pants. So it was it was poetic. Those are some tight pants, Mike. Those were 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 <laughs> were. <tight pants. laughs> uh, I think it's butt cheeks are breathing now. Yeah, I think it's the Dallas Cowboys. All right. So and that and that comes from look Amari Cooper. Say whatever you want about him. He's a hundred million dollar do. man, and you do. Uh, Michael Gallup. I know we all like him. Yes. The ascension, and then uh, C D Lamb drafting uh, the next the heir apparent to the eighty eight legacy in Dallas. Those three at wide receiver in that offense, the opportunities that they'll have to shine, um, yeah, I'll cast my vote for them. Yeah, and don't, don't forget <clears throat> Mike's guy. Yeah, Blake Jarwin. If you're going to involve the tight end, then you just upgrade it, my friend. I have to be completely silent about Blake Jarwin <laughs> or else the Foot Clan will be injured by this. <laughs> you can't have all three of us talking about that's, Blake that's Jarwin. That's fair. And I would throw out, I mean, th- those are two solid picks. But I'm going to go with a wide receiver core that has uh, a wide receiver who has the second most yards of all time. And he continues to play and he continues to be great. I'm talking about Larry Fitzgerald and the Arizona Cardinals, who they were already, I mean, they were solid with Larry Fitz and Christian Kirk. And then, like, who's the third? I don't know. Well, we have got to figure it out. Behind him, they've right. got two high draft picks from last year. Andy Isabella. We can figure it out. And they said, "No, we did. We we have we figured it out because our number three is now Christian Kirk because DeAndre Hopkins, who is a top five wide receiver in the NFL right now, who certainly by the end of his career will be like top ten in yardage when he retires. So I'm going with the Arizona Cardinals. And I mean, shout out to the postman who always delivers. Dan, Dan Arnold. Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to say more than that. People don't know him by the postman. Kevin Costner. <laughs> I think some of our listeners know him <laughs> by the postman, but no, Dan Arnold is prob. I'm going to say probably not a household name at this point. I I thought about Arizona. I mean, I went through team by team, looking at options, and I had kind of focused in on the wide receivers. But um, no, Dan Arnold always delivers. It, look, your package will be there on time. That's right. <laughs> Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Just, just to clarify, people thought uh, maybe I meant touchdowns. No, I meant literally your your Amazon box. Right, will show up on time. Yeah. He is also in the off season. He needs postman. to supplement <laughs> the income that he's receiving. <laughs> yes, um, the Seattle Seahawks have signed running back Carlos Hyde. All right, to a one year contract. He's recovering from surgery. We found out a torn labrum. And so Hyde joins the running back room that had Chris Carson, Rashad Penny, and now Carlos Hyde after a, a successful season of of getting the ball handed to him over and over and over again in Houston. Mm-hmm. Hyde ends up in Seattle, which means he will not end up in Philadelphia. Correct. I made an interesting dynasty trade, and I know, you know, I don't always bring these up, but I know people enjoy hearing what happens in our leagues, and there were different different opinions. So I traded Miles Sanders away. Pre, this is pre-signing. Pre-signing of Carlos Hyde. Yep. I traded Miles Sanders in a dynasty, which I've noticed that people have a kind of a wide view of Some what, people assume he's going to be the next Christian exactly, McCaffrey. He's exactly. just going to be the best. So I traded him for 
Raheem Mostert, Deontay Johnson, a first and a second round draft pick <laughs> in this year's draft. <laughs> My goodness. And I put the poll up on Twitter <clears throat> and I said, great, A, B, C, D. And it's just like 85% A or B right. with the hall. Like your reaction, your reaction, Jason. It's like, that's a lot. But then at least 15% of people thought it was the worst trade that I've ever made in my because life. Those are the Sanders the people. The Miles Sanders yeah. people. Proving that in life, at least 15% of people hate you no matter what you do. Yeah. And um, But part of the thought with Miles Sanders is, look, I have an opportunity. This person really wanted him. Carlos Hyde could end up in Philadelphia. He didn't. Mm -hmm. Now, and he, he was one of the bigger threats because he fits the mold of the Jordan Howard, could get a lot of volume. Now, Devonta Freeman is still one of the rumored names, but Freeman is, that's another bit of news today. He's, he says he's willing to, uh, willing to sit out the season. AKA retire. Yeah. Yeah. Freeman, Does he not know uh, his like yards per attempt went from like a you know four point five down to three point six yeah. last year and that he hasn't been healthy since twenty sixteen and get this man a better agent because <laughs> I I mean it's not look, when you are an an, an elder running back and right. he's twenty eight. Yeah, I mean at at this point right now, twenty seven is where you you're not you're not hitting the wall from a production point in fantasy football, but from a um real life getting a big contract what teams are like why why would i yeah. sign a three-year contract to a guy who's 27 when i could just draft a cheap replacement option who is, is going to be able to do the same thing and and it's worth noting that the seahawks wanted freeman they preferred freeman but freeman would not take that contract that's when they went and signed their third hope to be ready week one running back oh uh, he'll be ready yes no yeah, i know he'll the be ready and it's interesting for seattle i mean this is a real solid insurance policy. The The notes out of Seattle were still Chris Carson is – we fully intend that Chris Carson will be the starter of the Seahawks, which is – I mean, that's great news. That, that That's already out there. So if you're – if there's somehow a dip in Chris Carson's ADP, like right now you're playing best ball, I would be uh, probably buying the dip. Even though Chris Carson is a scary – draft pick right now because you're not sure he's going to be fully healthy but the team is saying he's still the guy Carlos Hyde is just going to be there in case both uh Rashad Penny who's expected to go on the, the pup list and Chris Carson if 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 he's not ready to begin the season then it'll be Carlos Hyde more than likely and that deal I know it was kind of brought up as a four million dollar deal that Freeman passed on from what I understand now, it is not a $4 million deal. That's the max the value of the deal. It's more like a one, one and a half with incentives. You talked, Mike, about Carlos Hyde being somebody that if he landed in Philadelphia would yeah. greatly concern you about Miles Sanders. Yes. Doesn't concern you as much because of the context that you understand in Seattle right now? Right. In and regards to the Chris Carson value? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, the Eagles are reportedly still trying to sign a veteran running back. Uh, hides off the board could be LaShawn McCoy, could be Devonta Freeman. I, I think fantasy owners should be much more scared of Freeman than McCoy. LaShawn McCoy is toast. I mean, you saw it last year. He had every opportunity to be the starter, and he was inactive oftentimes. He, he, he doesn't have anything left. Whereas Freeman, while I think he's on the downtrend of his career, that would be more concerning. And honestly, I would... I, I would personally be more concerned about Freeman than I would Carlos Hyde because he's a good quality pass catcher, and that's where Sanders' fantasy value. If he starts encroaching on that, where Carlos Hyde would not have, um, you know, I I would be a little bit more concerned. Sure. Yeah, in that situation, you would actually have three backs that can catch the ball there in Philly. Yes, I mean, you'd be smart by Philadelphia. You'd have Boston Scott, you'd yep. have Devonta Freeman, and you'd have Miles Sanders, which means you would have disappearing weeks for Miles Sanders, most likely, which would be unfortunate. Um, Okay, and then I guess the Jets signed Joe Flacco, and, uh, and, and Brooks felt like that should be in Super Bowl it. MVP. Thank Joe you, Flacco. Thank you, Jason. Are I you a big Flacco fan, there, uh, Judge? I mean, who isn't? Okay. Right. <laughs> That's a strong, strong point. You guys want to play a game? Yep. Let's do it. I want to play a game. All right, we're gonna play this or that. We're going to choose between two players, same position, same average draft position as of right now, and 
debate, discuss who we would take in that situation. So it's kind of fun. We're going to kick it off with uh, what a blast I guess, from the past. I know a blast from the past. We'll call it veteran running backs on new teams, and that is talking about David Johnson and Todd Gurley. And the judge dug up an old audio clip because we had a great debate on who's which of these guys is the RB one back in 2016. Oh, simpler times. I mean, we even talked to both these guys on mm-hmm. the show about, you know, the competition between who's the best running back in football. Um, so I, I haven't even listened to this. Let's let's listen in. Well, there's a question out there that says, who should I draft this year for fantasy football between Todd Gurley and David Johnson? And I would say David Johnson. I hope that's not a homer in me. But why would you <laughs> say David Johnson? Uh, I think uh, you definitely should pick me. Todd's a, a great player, but um, I feel like with me, I'm able to produce um, on multiple phases of the game. Uh, obviously, running the ball, catching the ball, and uh, just being utilized so many different facets facets of the game uh, in that way, and getting guys points um, so in so many different uh, ways. Well, we got to tell you, we had David Johnson on our show a few weeks ago. And he said he should be the first pick. Man, tell David to sit down. <laughs> a little blast from the oh, past. That's so good. Those were yeah. good days. It, the, the, the debate used to be who's going to be the running back one. Right. The debate's changed. The debate is now <laughs> who's going to be the one uh. I draft in round, you know, late three, right. three four. Yeah, so... Right now, David Johnson sits as, at 15 in our consensus rankings. Gurley sits at 19. For me, it's David Johnson. The variables in play are lower for DJ in Houston. I know the volume will be there. I know the pass catching will be there. What he does with it, it won't be what he did with it when those interviews took place in 2016. But, you know, we saw last year a very washed Carlos Hyde do enough damage to be relevant for fantasy purposes. David Johnson's better than last year's Carlos Hyde. All the Hopkins targets are gone. And Gurley just has too many question marks for me. I don't know how often or how much they'll use him. His carries have gone down three straight years. His knee, his own offensive coordinator doesn't know what's going on with it. That's my vote. I would go David Johnson. I am on the Todd Gurley side, and and here's why. I, I think that when I watch film last year, the offensive line was obviously terrible for the Rams, but Todd Gurley did not look washed to me. He looked like the same guy that we saw years prior with Jeff Fisher and the Rams at a terrible offensive line. They couldn't do anything because he was getting tackled for loss so often. That you know that was part of it. But when I watched David Johnson as a runner last year, Yay. I was Yay. he looked so much slower than he used to. Uh, he's still great as a pass catcher, but I, I don't worry as much about this knee issue that has not taken Todd Gurley off the field that much. They paid him a one-year contract. They're going to run him into the ground. You've got a head coach here in Dan Quinn who's on the hot seat. He's got to win, and Ito Smith is not going to be winning it for you. The the other backups there are the most uninspiring backups that I am I am not afraid of in Atlanta, and... You have the most vacated targets in the league for Atlanta. Though Todd Gurley will be involved in the passing game. If you look at just the carries, right? Devonta Freeman, who's not th- thought of as a workhorse, had a higher per game rushing total than Todd Gurley did last year. Todd Gurley's total opportunities this year are going up, not down. Way up, I think. And and I think the the passing work will matter because there are three offensive weapons in Atlanta. I I don't I don't look at Hayden Hurst as some great option to me it's julio jones todd Gurley, and calvin ridley i i think i think Gurley will be super involved so assuming i'm assuming he passes the physical 100 percent. yes that is 100 percent based on him playing football it's which is for Gurley, it's a bit of a debate it's, it is and in atlanta i mean like russell gage kind of showed up i think that he's a quality player i think you're downplaying hayden hurst a little bit too much as well that's fine, but Hayden Hurst isn't going to come in and take over Austin Hooper's role to the entirety. He's not going to come in and command every single one of Bo- those targets. Both teams have a vast amount of vacated targets. Yes. So it will be interesting. There, It's funny, four years removed from this discussion when we had them both on the show and they talked about you know, 
at this time they were, you know, one or two in the league. It's interesting that they find themselves in pretty identical situations, right? Coming into teams with lots of vacated targets, uh, kind of wore out their welcome on both of their respective franchises. Both had salary cap numbers that neither of those teams wanted to carry anymore based on the production levels. We did talk about Gurley, the Gurley situation maybe being one that just worked for both teams. You know, worked for the Rams getting rid of the contract, worked for Gurley finding himself in a high volume situation. I just have more confidence in David Johnson's health than I do Gurley's. And it, Gurley's still only 25. You know, it's, uh, he's, sure. he's not. How old is his knee? 25. <laughs> and that's what I will continue to say because it is a fact. <laughs> it's funny you bring up the contract because one of these players has a much larger contract than the other. Yeah, no, I, I will admit David this. David Johnson's still a double digit millionaire right Here, now here's what i will definitely admit on the david johnson side is that uh bill o'brien will have a need to prove that he was right in taking on that contract and trading deandre hopkins so yep. I, I think both guys are going to get work that's why i'm siding with the one that i think looked better on the field last year who's also three years younger I just want to be clear. How old do you believe Sonny Michelle's knee is? 72. <laughs> okay, because he has his 25 as well. I'll All take, right. I'm going to take DJ of those two. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Let's go Cooper versus Cooper here. Oof. Amari Cooper or Cooper Cup? Oh, man. Right now they are back-to-back -back in our consensus rankings, and that might not matter to me in an ADP situation where it's that close because it's going to be a little bit about what I want on my team. Now, some stats about Cooper Cup that I, I thought were pretty interesting. Um, I d very similar situation to what Juju Smith-Schuster has seen in terms of success outside of the slot, sure, which has been not much by way of uh, performance against man and zone coverage outside of the slot. Um, Cooper Cup, he ended up uh, never finished above the 12th percentile in success rate in, in man uh, versus man or press coverage at any point in his career. Hasn't been able to play outside. We saw at the end of the season, two tight end sets, knocking Cooper right. Cup's opportunities down. We've debated it. We've talked about it a lot on the show. Amari Cooper has the disappearing acts from time to time. My vote is Amari Cooper. I would... I think Cooper Cup has a great opportunity, but I think Amari Cooper is more, uh, there's less risk of something strange happening the way it did to Cooper Cup at the end of the year. Cooper is going to be out there. That's my vote. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think both of these guys, you can make an argument for them finishing as a, you know, as a top five wide receiver being fantastic. And both these guys, you can make an argument that they carry a lot of risk. What, what we saw at the end of the season with both guys last year. Uh, I am on record as saying that I believe Amari Cooper and his downturn at the end of last season was due to injury, was due to being out there as more of a decoy. And if you look at the beginning of the year, he was consistent. I believe Amari Cooper is going to have a phenomenal year. I'm in on both guys to a degree. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like both. This isn't an indictment against Cooper Cup, but um, you know it's, it's more of a support on Amari Cooper's side. I... Recently moved Cooper Cup down in my projections. I went back through, just thinking through all of all of what happened at the end of last year, and one and of the just, only double digit touchdown yeah. guys in football. <clears throat> I, like he is the way that McVeigh uses him out of the slot is absolute perfection. But that the risk that they do go to these the two wide receiver sets and the the two tight end sets. I mean, it's. It's troubling. Like I've so I've I've moved Cooper Cup down, which uh, regrettably makes me choose Amari Cooper in this situation. Cooper Cup, I flipped Cooper Cup and Robert. Are we taking a picture of this I, moment. I just taking a picture of you. I didn't even know we needed to kick it over you, Mike. <laughs> I just assumed everybody out here would know. Well, I will never take Amari Cooper in any world. Wow. Yeah, I I flip flopped Cooper Cup and Robert Woods in my rankings, and that that has pushed Cooper down to being a lower-end wide receiver, too. Can I just get you to say, I love Amari Cooper? No. Mm. I will that was never. a good try. <laughs> if there was ever a time to try <laughs> this, it, this Jay. The moment. You that, should have said, like, can I get you to say, I would draft Amari Cooper over Cooper Cup? Because that's yes, what he said. I, I would. Yeah. Boom. I didn't need to. He just <laughs> did it for me. All right, before we get into the next uh, ADP decision here, I want to thank our sponsors, 
Remember our friends at Shady Rays? Oh, mm. I do. The independent sunglasses company that does not overcharge. I love when I get to talk about sponsors that I already had used for years before they became sponsors, and that is the story with Shady Rays. And I legitimately, I'll just be straight with you, I lose or break my sunglasses so much that I don't, I can't, I can't afford to go out and spend $150 on a pair of sunglasses. And Shady Rays has this amazing warranty where they replace your shades if they are lost or broken, which I do both. And it doesn't matter what happened. You can, uh, you know, take a wave in the ocean the way that Judge Giamatti did when we were uh, on tour last year and send your sunglasses flying. You can lose them. They will replace them. And uh, that's all there is to it. And they have great styles. They work well. I have used them for years and years and years. And uh, they also provide, uh, they provided 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed. And they've provided over 10 million meals Woo. to date exclusively for our listeners they give us the best deal they have to offer it's a black friday level deal use the code fantasy and you get 50 percent off two or more pairs at shadyrays.com it's a buy one get one free you can get two pairs 48 dollars with the amazing warranty redeem only at shadyrays.com use that code fantasy where you can find all their newest shades and best shades and foot clan did you know did you know two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Or on this show, one out of three, yeah. I certainly know that. I am well aware. And listen, the best way to prevent <laughs> hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication <laughs> delivered right to your home. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. They deliver your medication every three months, so you could say goodbye to the pharmacy lines and awkward doctor visits. Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months to see the results, so it's important to act fast. It, it makes sense, right? The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll you save. You'll Keeps. You want to Keeps your hair? Use Keeps. <laughs> Keeps treatments start at just $10 a month, plus for a limited time, you can get your first month free. I know this is important to a lot of guys. It's important to me. So listen, if you're ready to start taking action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. All right, let's do uh, some late round quarterback ADP decisions here. We've got a two pack of them. Let's start with Big Ben Roethlisberger or Kirk Cousins. Mm -hmm. They're being similarly drafted right now, um, and I don't know if it changes the pick, but it, you know, if you're looking at one as a late round quarterback in a redraft league, or you're looking at one as a second quarterback in right. like a two QB super flex league. Give me your answer for both of those. We know the narratives. Big Ben coming back from injury. Uh, Captain Kirk, very efficient. L loses Stephon Diggs. I think I think because of the Diggs loss, regardless of this question, oh, Cap my. Captain Kirk might be underrated and undervalued. Oh, you, so you, you feel like he can continue to succeed at the level that he has been? I think he may have just as much success without Stephon Diggs. And uh, that's not saying that that is league winning success because of the way this offense runs. Right. But I don't, I don't think it makes sense to devalue him just because of that weapon being lost. I think what they added with Justin Jefferson, you know, having Tajay Sharp, having both of those tight ends that are capable, and just how efficient that Kirk Cousins can be. You know, he's Calvin or uh, Dalvin Cook catches the ball sure. from Kirk Cousins sure. and then does a lot with it. So um, that being said, I'll probably go Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. I want the ups, I want the ceiling, right. I want some potential ceiling, and and I think that's the that's the strategy here that's important for the Foot Clan to understand is when you're taking that shot at that you know that late round quarterback. There's two things you're looking for. You're you're hoping that you find a guy who is consistent and is just a, a great option for fantasy the whole year. And the other thing is you're looking for upside, right? Last year when you were drafting the late round uh, Lamar Jackson. When you drafted him, it was because you knew if he could stay healthy, his rushing upside is tremendous. Big Ben, you know, is two seasons away from, you know, a, a 5,000 yard pace. And you worried not, going not, in. Not a pace of 5,000 yes, yards. Of completing 5,000 <laughs> yards so a season. He was on pace, then he completed it. <laughs> Both true. Right? Yes. I am a huge believer in Juju Smith Schuster. 16 game pace. 
<laughs> was, was 5,000 yards. And then he, he, and then did, he did it. it. Um, I'm a big believer in Juju Smith-Schuster. We've had those debates recently. Andy, I know you're a big believer in Deontay Johnson. Well, Absolutely. Guess, it, it doesn't matter. They're both there for big bid. It right. It's not about who's better, who's going to have a better fantasy season. Uh, when it comes to Big Ben, he now has, uh, it's not Antonio Brown, but he has uh, a better option in a second year Deontay Johnson than he had coming into last year. And I still think Eric Ebron is a really great tool, a, a weapon around the goal line for Big Ben. Big Ben's upside is tremendous. This is a team that while their defense is great, their offense has been phenomenal with Big Ben over the last several years, especially since they made the offensive coordinator switch a couple years back. So I'm I'm all in on Big Ben. He's one of my favorite. It's funny because to me, when I look at these two quarterbacks. You have him ranked much higher than I've, Mike or myself. I've got Big Ben uh, at quarterback 11 and Kirk Cousins at quarterback 20. So this this isn't close to me. I don't I don't want Kirk Cousins. Right. I do want Big Ben. And we, you know, not that it means he cannot perform. We still have yet to experience the Big Ben without A.B. outcome. All the anticipation coming into the year last year was what will Big Ben be? Right. It was really selfish of, of, AB? of, of Big Ben oh. to miss that entire season. I yeah. mean, we had a lot riding yeah, on. There was a lot of months of discussion that he completely subverted with he the He just injury. threw it in the garbage. Yeah. By the way, injury notes on Big Ben for those of you out there following along. Uh, he underwent the major surgery on the elbow. That recovery is supposed to take a year in total. Um, Matthew Betts, who does the injury write-ups for our Ultimate Draft Kit, says he expects Ben to continue to progress through the summer, continue to ramp up volume and intensity. He says it's too early to predict if Big Ben will be able to hold up throughout the season because we don't have a lot of data regarding recovery of this specific injury in quarterbacks, which we haven't seen uh, a lot of, right? This was the Tommy John surgery uh, for a quarterback. So there is more injury risk to Big Ben, but when you draft a guy late, what are you looking for? You I wanted to bring it up. I'm looking at the schedule. I'm looking at the opening schedule, and it's a little bit uh, dicey for both of them. Like, like The Steelers open up. Oh, it's just, I can already hear the juju excuses now. No, no, no. The schedule. No, I'm, I'm oh. comparing these two guys of who, who do I want to take late round because if I'm taking them late in a single quarterback league that – He's playing for me week one, and I'm hoping that he's playing for me week two. But Big Ben opens on the road against the Giants. That's great. That's great. Then he's at home against the Broncos. Not so great. Middle of the pack. Yeah, I mean, they're the Broncos, they were – you didn't want to play against them at the beginning of the year. The, the second half, things kind of opened up. But they're not necessarily a defense that I'm choosing to pick on with my late-round quarterback – Meanwhile, okay. But remember, Chris Harris Jr., one of the best right. the, the best parts of the Denver Broncos defense is a charger. Sure, that is, that is an excellent point to remember. And then uh pew, and pew, pew, he's a charger. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Hold up. Wait a minute. He's a charger. Well, that's a thing now from here on out. <laughs> he's a charger. All right, and then I wasn't sure I was going to do it either. Oh, I'm very, very happy. Pew, pew, that pew. It's 100% the only thing <laughs> I heard up. when I said he's a charger. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay, so let's say if you like Big Ben against the Broncos, then it's then he gets the Texans the following week. That's great. Yeah, at yeah. home or on the road? At that home. one's at home. Okay. And then he's against the Titans. So There he, has been the home Big Ben narrative in years past, sure. too. And uh, I'm not sure I'm as excited about him on the road in week one against the Giants as you might be. So, so and then he runs into the Titans where you'll – maybe I think you the have Titans a, are a good defense. Yeah, I maybe you have good. enough data at that point to go, yeah, I'm rolling with Big Ben. Then you're looking at Kirk Cousins. He opens at home against the Packers. That's fine. But then uh, – I mean, well, it's, it's fine-ish. I guess I should say Kirk Pe wasn't Packers great. Are, Kirk Packers was not great good. against them last year for fantasy purposes. Then Colts, then Titans. That's the the opening schedule for Minnesota, so that that yeah, makes Big it ben. makes it a very yeah. easy pick to go to Big Ben. All right, uh, yeah, it'll be pew 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 pew. He's a charger. <laughs> All right, Sam Darnold, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, I select Oof. neither. <laughs> Is this a three four quarterback league? I look. I it's a I, worthy I, answer. I'll be honest. It's a worthy answer. Are you take are are you willing to take either one of these guys in a one quarterback no. league as your <laughs> okay, so no. let's talk two quarterback. I mean, leagues. these guys are consensus 25-27. It's fun to talk about because Teddy Bridgewater has, you know, 
a brand new team and some weapons and a new collegiate head coach that gets everyone riled up about, you know, new play calls and things like that. But I, and so I guess that's my answer because of the weapons, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Robbie Anderson, and the Darnold can lose me a week. Teddy Bridgewater is probably not going to like it's completely fair. sub. He might score me nine points, 10 points, but he's not going to score me negative four. Darnold can have those weeks thus far in his career. So Bridgewater feels slightly safer if I'm in a league that forces me to start one of these guys. If I, if I was a general manager of an NFL franchise, I would much rather have Sam Darnold than Teddy Bridgewater. I think the ceiling is higher for Sam Darnold. But in fantasy, we've got to take the position that they're in. And Sam Darnold, while his offensive line is better, and he's coming into year three, and he should he, he should be able to take a step forward, it's going to be difficult. For him to take a step forward with the weapons he has. He lost Robbie Anderson. Teddy Bridgewater gained Robbie Anderson. Mm. And I don't think Brashad Perryman and Jamison Crowder's dink and dunks, they don't get me excited for fantasy. Whereas Teddy Bridgewater, DJ Moore is electric. Curtis, Curtis Samuel is lightning on the outside. And then you add Robbie Anderson. So much electricity going on. Oh, man. Christian McCaffrey is just full of wattage. <laughs> You know? So, no, I agree with you. The weapons are the reason I take Teddy Bridgewater. The power has never gone out in Carolina. That is that is probably not true. Both of them. <laughs> it's probably not accurate. So, uh, you're going Teddy? Yes. Mike? I see that I have Bridgewater one spot behind Darnold, but I feel like this is a slam dunk. I would rather take Teddy Bridgewater and get the upside of uh, – the, the the surrounding cast for Teddy Bridgewater is so perfect for what he does of between Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore. Like Teddy Bridgewater is I know, I know you were dismissing it, but he's at least interesting to me. I'm not gonna draft him. I'm not I'm not that interested, but halfway through the season, Teddy Bridgewater could be a very viable streaming option who you might play him a few Listen, weeks in if, a row. If DJ Moore takes a 75 yard screen to the house, Teddy Bridgewater gets those points. That's, if Christian McCaffrey takes a 75 yard screen pass to the house, not if he throws Teddy, it behind, not if he throws it behind the line of scrimmage. That, that would be true. a pitch. That, that, that is true. But uh, there are ways that Teddy Bridgewater can <laughs> succeed even without his, you know, his making anything happen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just you know he's he's the next level of the old Alex Smith jokes. Like if you need someone to pick your kids up, Teddy B's got you covered. He's not going to let you down. That's true. He'll be there on time. Very punctual. Sam Darnold, keep him away from your Oh, kids. Sam Darnold. Oh. Can you think of a quarterback you would rely on less to pick you up from the airport than Sam Between Darnold? The very, he's very young, so they're I, less reliable. And the mono. So irresponsible. The mono's a problem. Look, I, I love Minshew, but he ain't showing up. <laughs> Minshew's. See, I think you're wrong. I think that Minshew oh, is. Oh, is he like the good uncle that actually. Yes. Like, I, th I feel like Minshew puts on the rock persona, but when it comes down to it, you wake up, your lawn's already mowed. Minshew handled it. He got up early? Yeah. Mm. Jorted it? I could see. I <laughs> got to show off them thighs, yeah. man. I could see that being the case. I just don't believe it till I see it. <laughs> All right, I like this one. Uh, we're all fathers. We have to teach our kids. You know, we have multiple children each, and they all have to share. Uh, let's talk about running backs who now have to share. Mm. It's nothing that fantasy owners enjoy. These are sixth round average draft position running backs. It, Damian Williams in Kansas City, Marlon Mack in Indianapolis. Uh, both of them, when you draft them, you do it with clenched teeth. Yes, and a ton of fear. Going through your body. Did you say clenched cheeks? It, that too. That as well. I did not say that, but that that is accurate. All right. Um, if you draft the way I draft, very <laughs> clenched. Um, Hard to clench your cheeks without clenching your teeth. I think he was talking about a different set of I'm cheeks. Just, I'm just saying it's, it's, it's difficult to pull that off. No, but continue. No, I, I continue, just lifted up in my chair just like an inch just to test it. Um, so... Did you say continue father? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, weird. Marlon Mack, Damian Williams. So much hype around the two rookies. Yeah. Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Jonathan Taylor. The offensive line situation is obviously wonderful in Indianapolis. Damian Williams is always seemingly a beneficiary, not the cause of his own success at times. Where do you go? I mean, are you trying to get mm. – to me, you, you look at this situation and Damian Williams is 
somebody that, okay, maybe you get elite talent and elite production for a handful of weeks. Do you get that from Mac from the beginning? No. So it is my belief that both of these players, when you're drafting them in a redraft league this year, are essentially handcuffs. And if they're a hand, now I don't, I don't like drafting handcuffs. I like handcuffs going into the playoffs, but not in the draft season. If I'm looking at these guys as an injury to the starter is where I get their value, then it's Damian Williams to me because there isn't really that third guy I'm scared of. He has shown success in this offense. The offense is better in Kansas City. So I think Damian Williams for me would be the pick simply because I look at these two guys as handcuffs. Now, if you're needing to play one of these two guys, it has to be Marlon Mack. I just don't think we should look at either of these guys as handcuffs. Because they're not going to be that to begin the year, either of them. I don't believe they will be involved enough to be someone I want to start in fantasy. I'm not saying they're not getting any use, and they're going to be usurped by their rookie counterparts, and so their only value will come as a handcuff. I'm saying that's when they're a starter for me. I I just don't think you're going to be starting Damian Williams or Marlon Mack happily in fantasy. They're going to be on my bench, and when they become valuable – is win an injury to Yeah, I mean guy. you could be right. We are we do have the model. We've seen Jordan Howard be ignored in fantasy drafts last year mm -hmm. and Miles Sanders, the second round rookie right. who's all hyped up and drafted before him and all of a sudden here comes Marlon Mack, Jordan Howard, here comes Damian Williams, Jordan Howard and the team trusts him. So that that's still a possibility. Hey. I think I would go Damian Williams. I think I would go Damian Williams the but the line is better in Indianapolis, and Mac is yeah. is the better player for me. It just feels like Damian Williams is more likely to be the starter for sure, Week One. Uh, it, I mean, that's there's a probability of of neither of that these players having the starting job, but it feels like Damian Williams is more likely to be the guy. Well, he's the week, pass catcher Week too. One, I Week mean, Two. Meanwhile, Marlon Mack, like if, if Jonathan Taylor comes and shows out during whatever training camp that they have. Oh, it, yeah, this is this is rough. I don't I'm going with Damian Williams. Going Damian. I mean, Naeem Hines will be on the field in third grant uh, on third down. Oh, yeah, and they're so trying to set that Marlon game Mack's to be on not going to come in even if he has he's the starter, he's not going to have the pass catching work that Williams would have. True. Do you think it's Mack, Jason, or are you on the Damian Williams side no, as well? No, I I I'm I'm on the Damian Williams side because of what I view them as for my roster. I don't view these guys as guys I want to start. However, if you had to start both guys 16 games, that's where that's where I would say Marlon Mack's going to be more involved through the course of the season. I I agree with that. Uh, you know, better offensive line, better off, you know, I I think I think Clyde El Edwards Alaire will guys, be a workhorse by These guys really season. are going in the 6th round. Would you be drafting these no. players? I cuz we we've talked about them as values several times over the off season Usually. and I I There's think no that they way are, they're 6 round picks. But they they could still be in the 6 right now, but I would much rather go after a wide receiver or something, something yeah. else. The, the, the answer is if if you're choosing ADP this or that in the sixth round, it's that. Yeah, that the, the, the I'm not taking yeah. <laughs> either of them. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let me throw one more out here. Late round wide receivers. Anthony Miller uh, from Chicago and, or Preston Williams from Miami. Uh, I will – quite easily select Anthony <laughs> Miller in this situation. I feel like you had the hesitation between the two names because we are both just baffled by how much Jason seems to love Preston Williams. Correct. Who is coming off. He's an undrafted free agent who, look, he was having a, a very solid year, but then he tore his ACL. Uh, yeah, I mean, Preston Williams may not even be ready for week one. I can remember the Kamar Akins of the world having opportunities when there was no one else. I'm not saying Preston Williams can't become. But something. is there anybody else? I mean, yeah. Well, I there will be if he's not available week one. I mean, there will be other players out there on the field. I'm just we're not. going with ten players in honor of Preston Williams. Yeah, I, I was impressed with Miller having the stretch of games that he had last year. The the talent of Miller I like more than Williams. Miller is so, very confusing. Yeah, he is. And well, he's going to need. I mean, both of them are going to need consistent quarterback play to do anything. I mean, I mean, the reality is Anthony Miller's a, a a very good player who's had stretches where he's been great, but he's dealt with a lot of injury. His shoulder problems. I think he's had two shoulder surgeries now. Um, 
you know, whether that crops up again. I know that's one of the more common injuries to come again, but not as common when you have the surgery. He had the not, surgery. Yeah, not presently injured. Right. Um, so I, I actually like both of these guys. Uh, late round wide receivers who could take a step forward. I and and you guys are baffled by my Preston Williams love. I yes. I believe he looked good on the field last year. And when I look at how the depth chart for the Dolphins is I, I think he's got the clearest path to the wide receiver too. They had they had so many draft picks that they could have gone out and spent on uh, you know a really good wide receiver option over and over every round they're on the board are are they going to take this really great wide receiver out there and they didn't over and over i think that the dolphins believe in what they have in Preston Williams yes he's coming off the acl um but i i i lean Preston Williams out of these two oh, guys oh yeah alan hearns is there <laughs> yeah yeah did you see the catch percentage for Preston Williams last year I did not. What is it? I'll take a shot. I'll take a guess. Is it sixty targets? Is it between fifty and sixty? Yes. Uh, uh, he, not quite. You thought oh, he was leading you to yeah, a fifty-five. Yeah, I thought we were getting a good fifty-five. Yeah, which also is terrible. It's fifty-three percent. <laughs> Whoa! It's even worse. Thirty-two of sixty targets. But Anthony remember Miller, I mean, Josh Anthony Rosen Miller is about sixty-one percent. Remember, uh, okay. remember Josh All right. Rosen. All right. That's remember weird. the Rosen. Yes. He he was. Forget there. the Rosen. All right. Let's do some mailbag before we uh, close out. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and we need like the public apology has to happen now. Because I never apologize. We, you know, you, well, Jason's the majority owner of this apology, but oh, we're all, we know. all have equity. I don't know <laughs> um, what I'm apologizing for. It, <laughs> we, I've never gotten more feedback than when Jason contended oh. that Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. Uh, I'd like the people out there to know that we are better informed now. Oh my gosh, that we Ireland are so much better informed. Uh, seceded from the United Kingdom in 1922. Look, Northern Ireland is. Nor, um, correct is, me if I'm wrong, people. Uh, Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Yes, um, as, as far as my research has shown. Then I apologize for nothing. What? Also, if you're taking my geographic, <laughs> like, look, I think people were more disappointed in myself and Andy. What I Actually, yeah, Mike got some comments about like, you know, Mike's Mike's a studious man at times, and and they were expecting him to correct Jason, and in the correction never came. And then I just kind of went, I just said, "Oh, it is." And I've, I should never have done that. I've always been confused that they just have multiple names over there. If, if like it starts with the base of England, and then they have another name like Great Britain. Okay, now we include a more a few more. Now we go U United Kingdom. Now we include a few more. It's like. It's, it's confusing for stupid Americans. Yeah, because the technical name is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So I That's would, a lot of words. I would contend... Northern what? Then. <laughs> Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah, baby. I'm sticking... I, look, I apologize. There was a lot of ire. For nothing. That's why they call it Ireland. There was tons of ire. There was tons Oof. of ire. No, yeah. I, I, I apologize to those Southern who Ireland. are in Southern <laughs> Ireland. Yes. Also, ironically, you're talking about how you know these England naming right. principles are difficult for us Americans, and yet the weirdest thing we have in America it's is New England. New England. Oh, that was, where it's like, wait, this is not a state. As this a is child, there was nothing more confusing about geography than New England. I had no idea where it was. If I put you on the spot right now, Jason, I can see you about to type. Uh, my hands. If I are put off. you on the on the spot right now, can you name the states oh, that are part gosh, of New England? No, I mean I know Massachusetts and yes. Maine. I oh, believe is Maine in I, there? I think Maine is Maine in there. Maine is in there, yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 that Vermont? Um I mean if Maine yes, is in there, yes, New Hampshire, Vermont, Vermont, yes, yes, those yes. have to be just Okay. You guys almost skip, have them all. There's two more. Oh. Is Rhode Island no. in there? Yep. Yeah, oh, you got yes. only got one more. Oh gosh. You guys almost nailed it. You're really redeeming mm, yourself mm, completely. Yeah. New England. Uh is Pennsylvania in there? No. Oh, I would no. never have gone Pennsylvania. It's so close. Dang it. Uh, Jason, what are you gonna go with? The answer is not Ireland, by the way. It is not Connecticut, right? It is Connecticut. It is, oh, Connecticut, oh, yes. Because I, I said Connecticut a minute ago, and uh, he didn't respond. That's, it is Connecticut. Beautiful. That, there's New England for we it. We got it. That is, man, we are so good at this geography. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Brady owns all those states. Yeah, it's like, all what's the them. capital of New England? <laughs> they don't have one. <laughs> no. They're not a pro. It doesn't exist. It's a region. It's an idea. <laughs> it's an, it's it an is. idea. Yeah. All right. Okay. Questions. Thomas in Juneau, Alaska. Considering we all anticipate James Conner to miss time, who who would we expect to get the most work in replacing him? Would it be rookie Anthony McFarlane Jr., Jalen Samuels, or Benny Snell? I have my answer, but I want to hear you guys first. 
I believe based on what has been said um, from the team and, and what we saw last year, I think it will be Benny Snell. That's, that's what I think, too. That's I think it'll belief. be Benny Snell as well. The most electric player, uh, to borrow Oof. from Carolina, is <laughs> Anthony McFarlane. He's so good, he, man. He He's fun to watch, but I just don't think he is a guy – they can rely on to come in and, and touch the ball 15 times. He's It actually um, reminds me a little bit of the Darwin Thompson hype, yes. hype in, in Kansas City where McFarland is great, but how much great he do you get? Was McFarland a fifth-round pick as well? Am I remembering that right? You yeah, are I possibly fourth, remembering it right. <laughs> yeah, fourth, fourth or fifth. I no, four. I, he was a fourth. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think it would be Benny Snell in that situation. When it comes. Yep. <laughs> when, well, yes, oh. when oh. it comes. Sad, but true. Armin in Tucson, Arizona. Who has the better fantasy career, TJ Hawkinson or Noah Fant? Ooh. Uh, full PPR Dynasty League. It's a, it's a great question because I'm going to – here, Here's the answer. I have it. I figured it out. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, well. That, sorry for asking a question, Armin. I, I no, I like I don't even have I really don't have an angle on it. Like uh, Hawkinson dropped so many passes last year that could have had given him a wonderful season. Fant had explosive plays, low volume. We didn't see him with with Drew Locke. If I had to bet on one right now, I'm betting on Fant. If I had to bet on one, it would be Hawkinson. I, I liked him more coming in last year. Both guys showed flashes and disappearing acts, which is to be expected in a rookie year for a tight end. Sure. I liked Hawkinson. Um, in the pre-draft process, I think and expect him to be on the field more often. He's a good run blocker, um, and you know I I always saw him more in a uh, uh, you know in a Greg Olson type of role where he's always out there leaking out for passes, and and I I trust the quarterback situation there, which obviously has to factor in. What's funny for Hawkinson is I think we are disappointed. Because his week one was so good, yeah, like he came ah, out. He sucks. I mean, which and, is totally fair because everybody went out and rushed to the waiver wire to pick him up, but right? But if, if he sucked week one, then he would have sucked the entire year. But, yes, <laughs> but your your this expectation would not have have had have changed and formulated against Hawkinson. It would have just been, oh, he's a rookie tight end. He was a high first round pick. It takes some time. In, it's, it's funny that a player who had success makes you feel more negative about him. Oh, I, I understand what you're saying, but that is the flashes that Jason's talking about. You got to see a game-changing, week-changing tight end performance. Mind you, it was only in one week. And against Arizona, who but, everyone had a game-changing week. Yeah, and fan, tight end exactly. Position. Exactly. So Fant, Fant, his trajectory went up towards the back half of the year, whereas Hawkinson didn't really – come back into right. the fantasy relevance at all during the season he's obviously the higher draft capital guy yeah he's the player that had opportunities and blew it so i like i said jason and i disagree i don't know the answer it's eileen hawkinson okay but is, is the slightest of leans i'm a pretty big fant fan this year they You're just a, call you a fant yeah <laughs> it's gonna, it, it, i knew it was there it was well, there's nothing there i mean i have not hired in both of you guys yeah. I am at 10. Wow. That's the break. I mean, look, that could easily happen for either one of these guys could be a top tight, uh, top 10 tight end this year. They were drafted to be very relevant pass catching options yeah. in, in, for their respective teams. All right. One more. Let's go. Uh, Travis, who lives in Kyle, Texas. Is it a standard scoring at, league? At Kyle's? At Kyle's house in Texas. Okay. Uh, Just clarifying. In a standard scoring league, is it worth handcuffing Zach Ertz with Dallas Goddard this season? Standard league, six bench spots, but this is a pure handcuffing a tight end yeah. question. No, I don't think it's – it's never worth handcuffing a tight end unless you're talking about a dynasty league where you have 30 roster spots. Yeah, I mean, Goddard will be – drafted in most leagues yes, I, I believe that so you know someone is going to grab him maybe even to start him on a weekend week out basis but I can't imagine that you start Goddard on a roster when you have Ertz ever, ever. And, and that's not to say Goddard won't have better weeks he'll right. get the touchdowns and, you just never you know, will make that decision to go yeah this week feels like a Goddard week right well, and so if he's on your bench then you're just you're going to be lamenting, and eventually you will develop a spite for Dallas Goddard <laughs> of taking up your bench spot that you can't pick up someone from waivers 
and you and then you'll be even more feel more pot committed that now you can't drop him as the season progresses because now the injury risk for Zach Ertz is going up as he plays more. Like it's it's a but bad then, situation. But then you know you'll try mean? to you'll try to trade him, but your league will know that you're up against it because yes. you only got one tight end spot. So you really need to drop him, and then you'll just end up yeah. dropping him. Yeah. And, so don't do it. And Ertz, while he has missed games, you know, over the last three seasons since he's been really the starter, he's averaged fourteen point seven games played. So you're going to get that, but that game, that all one, that yeah. game, when he goes down, you'll be prepped. So I was no, going to say, I, that's not a good fantasy strategy in general is like, oh man, I can't wait for this guy to finally <laughs> fall off so I can take advantage behind him and I'm going to predict that. That's a, you're going to get it wrong more than you get it right. Yep. Yes. So, all right. We want to thank Pristine Auction, a DJ Moore signed jersey, Ooh. $65 and <laughs> two cents yesterday. Mm. That's a good on deal. Brooks, was that you? Auction.com. Did you buy that, Brooks? I wish. Yeah, yeah, we maybe. made a mistake. Thanks a lot. If it was a Foot Clan member and they used the promo code Ballers, how much did it actually cost them, Andy? Uh, oh, are we are you doing some math? Yes. <laughs> I was, I was a little get, slow. You get $10 off. All right. Uh, PristineAuction.com. Use the code Ballers. $10 credit. And that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be doing an Austin Eckler giveaway very soon. An autographed Austin Eckler jersey. We're giving jersey. him away. <laughs> An Austin Eckler giveaway, yes. <laughs> Just the jersey. <laughs> See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>